Hello, today we're going to show you another use for umai charcuterie and make Italian beef brassaola. To make brassaola, you need an eye of round and some various herbs and spices and cure, which we'll get to in a moment. Now, the very first step is to take this uh, hunk of eye of round and clean it up a little bit. Trim off the fat, um, take out any silver skin or gristle that's on the surface. Um, you could trim the piece of meat so that it has a rounder shape, you know, more tube-like shape, but we decided to use this particular piece of meat just in the shape that it came in. And then we'll take all of these various ingredients that you see, the kosher salt, sugar, cure, or pink salt, black pepper, and the herbs, um, and juniper berries, and we ground them up into a very fine powder that was very easy to massage into the meat. Uh, this cure is essential both for the flavoring of the meat and for the preservation of it. You see, this is what it looked like after we finished massaging it in, and we put it in a container, covered it up, and put it in the fridge to rest for a week, turning it periodically. So you'll see how as the cure was going into the meat, it was releasing moisture. At the end of that week, we pulled it out of the container and carefully rinsed the entire surface free of any of the cure. The meat had become significantly more firm than it was a week earlier. And you'll see there's one face there that happened to be resting on the bottom of the container so it wasn't exposed to any oxygen. It didn't change color initially. So we blot it dry and tie it up to try to give it as round a shape as possible. Again, this uh, was not the most tubular shaped piece of eye of round, um, but we're doing our best to make it look presentable. Now, Bressaola is actually a dry cured product from the north of Italy. And uh, because it's made of beef, it's, it's a beef product, it's significantly more challenging to dry cure than pork because of the lower fat content and just the characteristics of beef. Beef will darken and harden on the outside much more readily than will pork. So, brisola uh, can be kind of challenging to me. So once we get this all tied up, we're going to go through the process of putting into the dry bag steak material. Uh, usually we recommend folding the bag back over your hand um, so that you haven't covered the inner surface, the inner opening with uh, any proteins. And then you'll need to trim the bag off so that you have just about four or five inches grip the top of the bag to make ripples so that it's easier to apply the material using a, a channel or a food saver sealer. We're inserting the vac mouse vacuum aid strip and resting it over both the vacuum channel gasket and the sealing bar. Using this food saver 3250 we pressed the moist sealing setting and then the vacuum and seal and helped the sealer to pull the air out from inside of the bag and pull the material down into good contact with the meat. Um, we like to do a second seal just for uh, safety's sake and in this case the first seal had actually drawn some moisture into it so a second seal was a good idea. After the meat is all sealed up to be nice and clean inside of this, we rest it on an open wire rack in the refrigerator, turning it periodically, and after a month, this is what came out. It was significantly smaller, of course, and you'll see very dark in color. But the dry bag steak material peeled off this beautifully dry cured piece of bressola very nicely, and once we cut through that pretty hard outer surface, found some beautiful soft pink meat inside. Um, now it's very much a matter of taste, but we actually found that the, the beautiful flavors of the herbs and the juniper berries had permeated the entire meat. And you may be a person who likes the tough, 
kind of jerky-like crust, or you may prefer the inner pink. Either way, this was a successful dry cure within my charcuterie.